Now for the uh, Astros, taking two of three. Uh, we know they won the series, but what else did we learn in the series? To me, Mike, it's that the Astros went healthy, and they're healthy now. <laughs> are really good. They are the best team still in the American League until someone proves otherwise. Yes, we see the Red Sox historic pace. Yankees, we know how great they've been. But the run differential actually says Houston yep. is the best team in the American League. And we're now seeing that when they're all together, of course, they just got Altuve back. And since Altuve's return, I know it was a tough day for him offensively, 7-1. and one. When they are on the field together as a team, uh, no matter what the records say right now, because the Red Sox have had a phenomenal year, I get that. And yes, there's some concern, Charlie Morton, totally going, going on the DL, DL today. Yeah, uh -huh. But when the Astros have their guys, and they've got them now, there is no better team in the American League. Well, since you're talking about all the A-list celebrities over there in Houston, <laughs> I think what I really want to talk about is the B-list, guys, the underrated guys, guys like Tyler White, Marwin Gonzalez. I mean, let's be honest, Marwin Gonzalez led this team in RBIs for the World Series Houston Astros last year. Listen to this. In the month of August overall, Tyler White is hitting 329, seven homers, and 21 RBIs in 21 games. Marlon, in the month of August, is hitting 330 with eight homers this month. I'm telling you, these guys are stepping up at the most crucial time of the season. And what's great about it is it's not those A-list celebrity right. guys. You expect things from them. These, these, I guess, undervalued guys, I wouldn't necessarily call them role guys because I think they're better than that. But if these guys continue to keep doing what they're doing right now, man, Houston Astros, baby, are sitting I, really, I, really good. I got to ask you what he said because the Red Sox has been consistent all year long, having a great season, two MVP candidates. Do you believe that they're still the best team in the American League? Yeah, I, I go a little different on that. I still think the Red Sox are up at the top, but now with Chris Sale and, and the uncertainty of his health, that definitely can mm -hmm. sway my opinion on number one and number two. And you talk about value with Tyler White. How about this? Mm -hmm. He was $1,000 senior sign 33rd round pick Western Carolina University back in 2013 he was signing again as a senior sign the Astros I'm told were the only team that really actually scouted him mm -hmm. and even turned him in he was not really quite an all the way professional baseball right. shape had to go down the Gulf Coast League he has hit though Nick at every level and one thing about when the Astros had so many key guys out it allowed White and the role players to get a lot of at bats underneath of them to build that bulk of good feeling at the plate and now it's going to carry them through I believe through September and October as well quick Absolutely. news on the Astros AJ Hinch Looks like he's yes. going to get a contract extension as well. He deserves that. Oh, he definitely deserves series. that. Uh, they are just three and seven in their last ten. So they got the win tonight, but almost blew this game, giving up the lead. So what's gone wrong for the Phillies? What's, what's led to this downward spiral? Well, they have not won a series in more than three weeks, which is why they are now in such a tough spot in both the wild card race and the division race. To me, Mike, it has been a lack of offensive consistency. Uh, Cesar Hernandez has been just okay in the leadoff spot and really has struggled at, at different times over the last month or so. And I would also point out again, you don't want to single out one player, Nick, but Odubel Herrera has been at times an all-star caliber player. They view him as a real centerpiece. They've had to move him up and down the lineup because he just has not hit consistently enough to be the player and the reliable guy that he's been in the past. So I think, Nick, it's a team that's just searching for offensive consistency yeah. alongside of Hoskins, and that's why it's been a struggle for them the last month. Well, I also think I'm going to stay on the offensive side of things, but I also think a big thing about all this, man, is you got to remember, they've brought over a whole new crop mm. of guys. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that. I mean, look, we got a list right here. we got Joey Bats, who just showed up the other day, Justin Bohr over there at first base, as Drupal Cabrera, Wilson Ramos, the Buffalo. Hey, listen, when you don't have all the talent in the world having a so-and-so harmonious locker room mm -hmm. that takes a little bit of time to gel together obviously there's a lot of guys that are in a lot of different positions right now but when you have that swag and you have that gel earlier in the season and all of a sudden things change late there is that meshing period right now I think the Philadelphia Phillies I, in my mind I still feel like they're one of the best teams uh, in the game but also, the way Arietta's pitching, the only person outside of Nola, Nola. I mean, and Nola's the only right. one that's doing damage right now. And to your point, remember going back a couple months, Arietta had the issues with the shifting. He wasn't totally on board with the way they were using their defensive pieces. Right. And they've not been a great defensive team this year either. So yeah. more concerns for the Phillies. All right, three and a half games out in NL East. See if they can make up some ground.